club is in grave doubt tonight after it was wound up at London's High Court over £65,000 of unpaid taxes. The court granted a request by Revenue and Customs to wind up the club, finding it was woefully insolvent. It now has seven days to appeal, but the best hope seems to rest on winning support from West's Norfolk Council, which owns the ground. The leader has met with the directors about two months ago to look at all issues, and one of the issues we can um, look at is selling the ground, but there are many, many options to actually look at. Staying with the football, actual playing the game now. There were wins last night for Colchester and Norwich, while Southend fared less well. With news of those games and of a loan signing and a special trophy, here's Jim Rice. The FA Cup on display at Colchester today. But for these kids from Friars Grove Junior and Mile End Primary Schools, it's Colchester's league form which is getting them excited. The U's went third in League One last night with a win over struggling Stockport. All over as a contest inside 15 minutes. Kevin Lisby's opener, followed by Clive Platt's fourth in as many games. With a Russell and a Martin already in the Norwich team, the arrival of Russell Martin might be confusing to some. But the loan signing from Peterborough makes perfect sense to Paul Lambert, who previously managed him at Wickham. You called Paul Lambert the gaffer in the press conference. That's obviously still how you see him. Yeah, yeah. I've never called him anything different, to be honest. I've uh, bumped into him a few times um, at certain games. We played against him last year at Colchester, and I saw him after that game. And uh, Yeah, I've always called him gaffer, so um, no, he's been, uh, he's been great for me. The gaffer's having a good time at the moment. Last night's 4-1 win over Brighton took Norwich's unbeaten run to seven games. Grant Holt, Wes Houlihan and the other Martin, Chris, plus an own goal, lifting the Canaries into fourth. They're in a right, um, like being a form at the minute, three lads with their goal-scoring ability. Sometimes he's unplayable, Wes, and if he's not type of form and, and uh, somebody's passing last night I thought it was terrific. Not so good for South End, though, who failed to build on their weekend win, going down 2 0 at bottom of the table, Tranmere. Jim Rice, Anglia News. And a thousand items of Norwich City football memorabilia have raised £10,000 at auction in Norfolk. The collection was assembled by the former Lord Mayor of Norwich, that's Roy Blower, who started collecting more than 60 years ago. One reserve team programme from 1956 made £680. Not bad at all. Now, a search on a scale normally seen for a missing person is continuing in Milton Keynes tonight. It involves scores of volunteers, the latest high-tech search equipment and even an incident room which has been set up as well. Well, our correspondent Neil Bradford has been finding out more. This is a search on an unprecedented scale, coordinated by a former police sergeant. I think we should go out and do a little bit in the woods where we were the other night. From this temporary incident room in a Milton Keynes car park, hundreds of volunteers have been systematically scouring the area. Lady! Lady! Lady is a nervous three-year-old cocker spaniel rescued from a puppy farm in the northeast. She ran away less than 24 hours after being rehomed in Milton Keynes earlier this month. The man who rescued her has travelled 250 miles to coordinate the search. Today I joined him and some of his volunteers. Some would say an extraordinary length to go to for a dog. They may, but dogs to us are like our children. And if you lose a child... <laughs> yes, thank you, cheers. If you lose a child, you'll go to the same length. And the people that are around here really love their dogs. Since Lady went missing, teams of up to 30 people at a time have been searching woodland 24 hours a day. They've even been using night vision goggles and thermal imaging equipment. Our volunteers print posters off, they hand them out to the general public, to dog walkers, um, to pet food shops, they uh, put them in taxi cabs, they put them in um, Royal Mail vans, anybody and everybody who can be out at strange times of the day. Graham will soon have to return to the northeast, but his local volunteers say they will continue searching until they find their very special lady. A very special lady indeed. In fact, Neil can now join us in the temporary incident room in Milton Keynes. Neil, some people watching this will think this is all a bit over the top. Why is Lady so special then? 
Well, basically, because she came from a puppy farm, that yeah. seems to have captured the imagination of the dog lovers here in Milton Keynes. Tonight's uh, search operation is being coordinated by Graham here. Now, if we come outside, you'll see that there are uh, a number of volunteers ready to search the area. There's already been a sighting tonight. They're ready togged up with their torches, maps, and the all-important night vision goggles. Now, Lady can survive in the wild for many months, and these volunteers say they will continue searching until they find her. Neil, thank you very much, and we'll let you know when we know. But time now to let you know who won last night's People's Millions vote. You'll remember, this is where ITV teams up with the Big Lottery Fund to give you a say in which projects in our region get a big cash boost. Yes, well, last night you chose the children at Rowan Gate Primary School in Wellingborough as your winners. They wanted to spend the money improving their hydrotherapy pool. And here's the moment. Their head teacher Laura, let them know the fantastic news. We've got some fantastic news for everyone. I've just received a huge... So lots of celebrations there, and it doesn't end there. We have another cheque for up to £50,000 to give away to one of tonight's projects. The first is a youth counselling and support centre in Essex, the second a youth centre in Norfolk. The Young Concern Trust is a project based in Harlow and we've been working here for a number of years and our core service is a counselling service but we provide a, a wider support service to young people. It's a, an essential service in a town like Harlow which is one of the three most deprived uh, towns in Essex. Uh, it's an area of particular need with a lot of young people with a lot of quite, uh, quite complex issues. Uh, school-related issues, bullying perhaps, right through to being the victims of sexual abuse or of serious crime. At the moment, we are based in a garage, and that's where we work, and that's where we provide all of our administrative services. We'd like to be able to at least double the amount of one-to-one -one counselling that we can offer to local young people. And at the moment, that just, you know, just isn't possible for us. My mum got cancer when I was like a toddler, and then... And, and then she really got really ill and then she eventually died, so I had um, bereavement cancer. If I didn't have it, then I would have just bottled all my emotions up and got really... I could have turned bad and, I, you know, took it out on anyone. I go on a course every Wednesday. It's about sexual health and relationships and learning all sorts of different things. As a local head teacher, the feedback is wholly positive. Um, both from the young people actually directly involved, but also their parents. We've got the lease of a new building, but it's in need of a lot of refurbishment before we can actually make it usable for the sort of things that we want. We've managed to raise enough money already ourselves to replace the roof, uh, but we want to be able to partition, put in an extra floor, develop some really good counselling rooms. And I just say to people, you know, imagine what it would be like if you were a young person, perhaps a young woman who was the victim of rape, or if you were a young man who perhaps have some relationship issues at home, what it's like to be told that you're going to be on a waiting list for weeks or perhaps months, or in the worst case scenario, for us to turn around and say, you know, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do to help you, and there isn't anyone else we can refer you to. Our project will help to change hundreds of young people's lives, so please... Thanks for us! Newtown Youth Centre is a place that the children can come um, two nights a week. It's just a place that they can come and play and chill out. We have around 200. Uh, they range.